one of the biggest wow griefers of all time, the one, the only tiny violin has been banned from World of Warcraft. Now, if you don't know who that is, he was the infamous fifth horseman. Basically, this happened about seven months ago. Tiny Violin got into one of the highest ranked hardcore guilds. Somehow won their trust to tank the four horsemen on Naxxramas. One of the deadliest fights there is in the raid. And with that position of power, he created the deadliest raid in all of hardcore. 36 fully geared in-game hardcore WoW players died to his shenanigans. How did he do it? You might ask yourself, well, let's take a look at the clippage. Now, the idea with this sort of thing is you tank a horseman in each corner of the room. You cannot overlap them. Look where he's going. Mark is like in the wrong spot. And you can hear, let me roll that back. You see where he's going? He is beelining to the corner where someone else is. A whole nother group. Watch this. And you could hear it. Listen to the Discord. You could hear it too. I'll turn it up. Pulling it. Stack up, stack up, guys. Stack up for the stack, meteor. Stack, in, stack, in, in, in. Stack, stack, stack now. Tight. I'm not moving anymore. There he goes. Man with a mission. Zilliac is. Mark Zilliac is in the wrong spot. Who's no on Zilliac? Feeny, move it. Panic. Oh, this guy's trolling actually. This way. Panic. Taunt Zillac and run it away. Run Zillac away. They're trying to remain calm tree. though. New oh, you should have already death wished. Dude, you're actually a fucking troll. Look at that. You see all those dead fucking spots? Look at that carnage. One man's vindication caused all those deaths. I think this will go down as one of the biggest, if not the biggest trolls, or griefs rather, in WoW history. And you can see here, he's not done. He's still keeping it there. Several other individuals die to this whole escapade. Again, they started with 40 in Hardcore Nax. 40. Four survivors. So, you might ask yourself, what happened to him after that? Was he punished? Did anything go down? Well, I can tell you one thing. He got a lot of attention to his stream, dude. Look at that uppy. Yeah. So, this is the stream right here where this all went down you can see as he started out it was big chilling we're at like 50 or so and then boom just after the troll look at that shot straight up and not only in the moment but look how much it lingered as well you could see a couple of the streams before big chilling you could see the the turning point right here at the 246 and then the big boom after that as well those are some big numbies that's a lot of attention. And not only did he get a lot of attention on the stream, but he also had big names like Asmongold and Stay Safe contacting him, doing interviews. I mean, it was a big story. But aside from the positives, what happened to his account? Nothing. This was back during the days where Blizzard didn't really regulate the hardcore servers. They officially clamped down uh, in August when the official servers came out. Then they took a big stance. But before this, it was sort of like the wild, wild west. They didn't really clamp down on griefers. So we kind of went unnoticed. But hold up. We got to rewind here a little bit. Because we got to talk about the dedication required to get to this point. This dude penetrated the highest level hardcore guild. Leveled a warrior to 60. Which, in a feat of itself, that's tough. Won their trust to tank. Not only a general, but the four horsemen fight in Nax. I mean, this was so fucking premeditated, dude. What could have possibly instilled this ethereal godlike rage within this individual to do this? Because this is months, if not years worth of work. Well, I dug and I dug deep. And this is one of the oldest clips that I could find. My understanding after doing a thorough investigation is that the initial salt was mined in 2019 when he felt like he was robbed and cheated out of the AQ mount. Okay, um, and yeah, I don't know. Like, these people have just been crying for too, too long. Too long they've been crying. And I decided that, you know, I needed to teach them all a valuable life fucking lesson on crying. And if you cry too much, then this is what happens, okay? You're gonna cry too much, and I'm fucking psychopath, and yes. 
You could also see, look at these multi boxes on the side. I will fucking get nine accounts and PvP the fuck out of everyone on the server. So, yo, Ken W wronged me. Ken W stole my Scarab Lord mount from Hear me. that. Ort stole my Atish from me. And so Atish. All these people wronged me. Man B from Girth Fury wronged me. All of Girth Fury wronged me. And this is just me giving back to the community after have been wronged by so many different people now i have to pvp them so you could hear the salt in his veins dude and as tame said he had been plotting his revenge for years and he had sown the seeds of this cold revenge here and there but that nax kill is what i thought would be his crescendo i thought previously that that was going to be the climax the pinnacle to this symphony of salt but I was fucking wrong. And that is where we land today. This happened a couple days ago. He was banned live. Okay, this is the clip. You could see him hopping around, doing his thing. And then, out of nowhere, boom. No. Yes. Oh, wow, we just got banned, chat. Straight up closed. A perma fucking ban. So what did he do? To cause this. Why did he get perma banned now? If he got away with the first slaughter, what could he have possibly tried to do that would have gotten him in trouble here? Well, let's take a look because as he put it, Judgment Day 2.0 went down two days ago. Yeah, let's set the scene. Somehow, this individual has penetrated the same hardcore guild again. Somehow, he had risen through the ranks enough to earn a spot on their raid roster and find himself on the final boss of AQ. Good old Cthun. Now, here's the thing about Cthun. It's a pretty intricate fight, especially when you start. You've got to be very, very careful when you enter Cthun's room because of an I-beam ability. If you time it wrong, the I-beam ability will essentially chain from player to player and absolutely decimate the raid. Before you even can zone in to the boss room, you will lose. And this is where our petite fiddler saw his opportunity and swag for the fences. Tentacles also. Just kill them, please. So you can see they're so grouping Del's up. Gonna run in they're waiting to roll. From the rest of us. I will call when it's time to go. Do not pop any abilities, no matter how mundane they might seem. Being really safe. You see the pull Do timer, we got 15. run in with me. You run in with Sizzle, not me. They're talking about the timings of running in, who's going where. Again, do not run in with me. The Wait, final oh sanity. Oh my Patrick, God. Patrick, 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 everyone, Patrick. everyone, everyone, everyone. What? Oh, oh fuck. God. Wrong corner. Oh shit, guys. That was the wrong what? fucking corner. What a great prediction. Oh. Fuck, Petri? Oh, I Petried. I Petried, so, okay. So, so, so the dude who's like, oh, raw core, that's him, okay? Holy fuck, guys. Listen. Holy fuck, guys. We'll Wrong in. corner. We're still in combat, <laughs> so if your Petri's not going off right now, you gotta re-Petri. Okay, so re-Petri? Okay. He's trying his best to play it cool with the whole wrong corner. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys, but it's, like, obvious. Like, you know that was digital. Basically, he pulled off another deadly run i mean let's just go go back and just see like how many people got ko'd there out of curiosity before every uh everyone disbanded yeah i mean you could see dude here's 40 boom instantly what was that like 10 dead people start dropping like flies another eye beam goes out drop people i mean he basically obliterated the whole raid and there would have been a lot more had that dude their leader not but so call him a cold for that Petri. He saved like at least 10 people with that shit. So that was his latest shenanigans. Okay, that was his most recent snafus. Now here's my take on this. And to be honest with you guys, I actually think this is fucking funny. Um, it's funny, and the clips are ha ha's, but at the same time, it sets a really bad precedent. And it's pretty toxic, and he probably should have been punished. Let's start with the Blizzard TOS. I mean, right here, if we look at the behavior section. It says behavior that intentionally detracts from others' enjoyment, like griefing, throwing, feeding, is unacceptable. Yada yada yada. Basically, it's a it's stated clearly here, and their in-game code of conduct 
that they're against that sort of thing. So just from that alone, there are grounds for them taking some sort of action. But aside from that, I think what's most important here is the precedent that is set if they don't clamp down on this, right? Let's think about this for a second. Let's check out some stats. You can see here from that stream that he just pulled off. I mean, what an explosive. What was that 600 extra? And you guys saw the streams from before. I think it's very clear and easy to say that there is a deep financial incentive for doing these sort of things. It's getting him a lot of exposure. More and more people are coming to the stream. And again, it's because the clips are so extreme. Uh, they're so intense that it's hard not to watch. I don't blame the hustle. But at the same time, we have to take into account that this hustle and that in order to produce these clips, it's at the cost of 39 other people's hardcore blood, sweat, and tears for months. That's a net loss. Again, it does produce funny content, great clippages. But at the end of the day, 39 people are getting wrecked for that. Let's just paint a picture where this was sort of shelled out in a public fashion and it wasn't clamped down. Think about what kind of precedent that would set for others, too. People would see the success, whether it be the stream, whether it be the clippages, whether it be the views, they might seek to replicate that. And if he goes, I'd say, like, unpunished or unrestricted, again, in a super public fashion, it kind of sends the message like, yo, we're cool with this sort of thing happening. We see it because how could you not see it go down, right? And we're not going to take any, uh, any action to address it, even if it's against our own TOS. So, again, I think these are... It's it's funny clips. I mean, dude, we sit here. It makes for great react content to watch these sort of extremities. But at the same time, yeah, it's it's at the cost of like 39 other people. And uh, dude, who knows, man, if they don't, you know, set a precedent and sort of lead by example on this, it could be the tip of the iceberg. This can encourage more people to be more extreme, to try and create the same sort of virality and the same sort of excess that our petite fiddler has seen here. And that's a shitstorm in a Pandora's box that we don't want to open, right? So that's kind of what I think. Coming from my POV as a dude, as a streamer, whenever you see that kind of big success, like with the death runs, that's my only example that I have. Whenever you see a big spike like that, you always want to replicate it. It's in your best interest. Are you talking about a spike, dude? You saw, boom, shut up by 500, 600 views, man. Insane. Yeah. It's kind of a trap not to. Funny to me, but not for the ones that worked super hard to get there. Totally understand him getting kicked out. Yeah. Same deal. Same deal. It's just like, it's such a funny spectator thing, but at the same time, it's like, dude, you know it's not good for the game. Yeah, you know it's not. You kind of, it, it's sort of like, you know, when a, when a, this might be an extreme example, but you know how uh, when a crime is committed and it's relatively new in terms of its nature, like it, I don't know, there's no precedent established by a court system yet. And so a judge may crack down on it super hard just to set an example. This kind of feels like that, right? I mean, I can't really think of any other grief at this scale that is a clear violation of, of the TOS. And again, at this level of publicity, that even comes close. Yeah. So I feel like just to establish a bar, you kind of have, it's like the hand is forced. It's a top tier troll as he did it twice with the same guild, but damn, I know, dude. To be fair, he does roll multiple accounts. I, I mean, maybe he does a voice change or two in disc. I have no idea how he operates. Um, Cause again, these things are so premeditated and they're so, uh, these events are, are set way before they actually, you know, the, the quote judgment day comes. It's tough to really say. I don't think Blizzard had the forethought of uh, psychopathic raid wires with <laughs> hardcore uh, new for them too. XD, yeah, for sure. I don't. I, I mean, this is one of those classic tough titty situations where it is truly inconceivable for somebody to go through that amount of effort to stage that amount of a grief. It is so, and it's for not even a gear. So many things had to go perfectly for him to be hand dealt that situation to like like forget the Cthulhu thing that's a little bit easier but to basically get a tanking slot on the four horsemen in hardcore as it's popping off the star is fully aligned for him there heard odds are you that he purchased the second account i mean that would totally explain how he pulled it off right because maybe they were already familiar with the person behind that account and that he bought it a little bit ahead of time and then struck when they least expected it
The question is, is the permaban even going to stop him? Might just fuel the fire for him to do more? I mean, realistically, I don't think it will. I mean, unless they IP ban, which I don't think they do because of how BNet services work, it's not. Dude's got so many accounts. I mean, we saw with the whole multi-boxing setup, right? It, he'll probably just fire up a new account in, in total seriousness. I don't think it would. It might discourage him, but I don't know. He kind of already reaped it. Honestly, both IP and HWID bans are easily avoided nowadays. Blizzard knows this. So what would be the solution then? Because uh, again, uh, this is probably a, a gap in my personal tech knowledge. If you have a player like this that you you want out yeah like doesn't matter if they fire up more accounts what is there even a solution to that how, how do we prevent them from just starting up a new account is that even possible like you said you went up 500 plus views probably not gonna stop it is very tough to cook those man Th those things take a long time to cook i imagine that's not sustainable because like it's one thing to pull off a a, a, a one-off right like i've had a couple events that i've done that have just been successful one-offs that are logistically really tough to replicate. And the griefs, while while there is some variance that you can do with them, man, trying to replicate those at the scale and to one-up himself every time to keep that momentum, that's tough, dude. <laughs> that's a lot. South Park or Family Guy? Real talk? I like South Park. I feel like South Park's a little bit more fresh for me personally. Family Guy seems more like bitty. Family Guy seems a little bit more disjointed, a little bit more sitcom -y. Whereas South Park feels like there's an overall narrative. You know what I mean? There's like an overarching story a little bit more. Um, sometimes the the one-off jokes and stuff like that with Family Guy, they're funny. But I think South Park, just in the way that they structure their episodes and their seasons and their jokes, it, it hits me a little bit more. So I got to give it to South Park. I think the band would fuel him to buy another account and do it bigger. What would be bigger than what he just did? We've basically wiped a raid and Nax. We've done it for Cthulhu. How do we get bigger than this? Or have we already reached that peak? You go after him IRL to get stop him? I mean, fuck, maybe block payment, like credit card info. Probably not how you could track that. The only thing I can really think of would be maybe payment info. I think some companies do that, but that's about it. Like I know Riot in Korea, you actually have to have your ID, your government issued ID attached to your account because they're very, very strict on geolocation when it comes to the Korean accounts. Blizzard does that whenever you swap regions now, if you EU and you want to go US, but I mean, there's no blanket policy for that. So off rip, the only thing I can really think of would be if you pay with the same method, if it gets popular enough doing this stuff, the copycats could be an issue too. That's where I'm at because it's like, as someone who's trying to learn the ways of, I don't know, the creator space, you look to the big boys right for inspiration you you look to the people who have made it there and who everyone's comfortable with and familiar with and who have already had successes and you, you try to see what they're doing right and then on the flip side you look at the up-and-comers you, you find smaller people who are up on the rise who are, who are gaining some momentum gaining some scene and seeing what they're doing right just doing a little trend doing a little market research i think it's pretty reasonable for people to look around see that that gets a lot of attention and probably try to go for it